Today's video is gonna be a project I have created that will kind of display what I have called agentic behavior. So what you will learn today is how to set up a system. So we are gonna use Python, but you can use JavaScript for this too, where two AI agents interact with each other autonomously. So let me just show you a couple of examples of kind of what the end results will be of this project. Response. Hi Mike, it's nice to finally meet you. How's your day going? My thoughts. He's taller than I thought. Seems nice, but let's see how the conversation goes. It's going well, thanks. I'm excited to chat. So tell me, are you into any fandoms or hobbies? My thoughts. Annie seems friendly. I should try to steer the conversation towards my interests in anime and cosplay and see how she reacts. Don't want to come on too strong, though. Response? Actually, yes. I'm really into gaming, especially challenging ones like Elden Ring and Dark Souls. What about you? Any games or fandoms you're into? My thoughts. Nice, he's making an effort to find common interests. I hope he's into gaming too, it could be something we share. Oh, that's awesome, I love gaming too. Though I'm more into JRPGs and anime-style games, have you played any of the Persona series? My thoughts. Okay, she's into gaming, which is a good sign. Mentioning Persona is a nice segue into anime. I'll see if she bites and go from there. Don't want to info dump my anime obsession right away. So what you saw in my examples, I actually use Claude 3 Opus and GPT-4 to have this agentic conversation. But here you can pick whatever model that suits your best style. You can use local models, you can use, yeah, whatever model you want here. And we're gonna look at how to integrate the text-to-speech function you heard here for each agent. So they each have kind of their own voice. And we're gonna look at how we can optimize the prompt for our agents. And we're gonna go through some fun use cases of this. Uh, so yeah, and of course in this video we will be using both LLMs and Python code and that is a perfect introduction to today's sponsor. Are you ready to level up your AI skills? Brilliant.org, the sponsor of today's video, are here to demystify the world of AI and programming for you. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, programming, data analysis and AI. This will help you build critical thinking skills to problem solving, not just memorizing. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also be becoming a better thinker. They're how LLMs work course is a unique AI workshop where you don't just learn about language models but actually get to interact with them. You'll discover how they build their vocabulary, choose their next word and even compare models trained on different datasets. And if you want to learn to code brilliance, programming with Python course is the perfect starting point. You will be building your own programs from day one, learning essential concepts like loops and variables. Uh, but more than just syntax, you develop the problem-solving mindset of a true programmer. Brilliant is all about building powerful skills and habits through engaging daily lessons. It's the perfect alternative to just mindless scrolling and you can learn at your own pace whenever you have a few minutes free. To experience everything Brilliant has to offer, visit brilliant.org slash allaboutai or just click the link in the description for a free 30-day trial. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And of course, a big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to the project. Okay, so let's just head over to our code and kind of go through, yeah, how you can set this up yourself. Okay, so my plan now is just to go through everything you will need for the system. I'm not gonna dwell too much on each line of code, but uh, I'm just gonna do it in like bulks and I'm gonna do like a quick explanation. We're mostly gonna focus on the logic uh, of the system. So yeah, you can see here, I imported everything we need for this system to work. Uh, you can read more into this and of course you have to pip install all of these uh, dependencies. The next part is gonna be to set our API keys and our clients. And for that we're gonna uh, kind of load a .env file. And you can see we have OpenAI for GPT-4 in my case and Tropic and 11 Labs. And we have those OpenAI API keys here and we have some clients we have set here. Uh, if you go to our env file here, or just an example, you can see, uh, yeah, you can see OpenAI key equals, and here you can just put in your own APIs, API keys, right? If you use 11 labs, if you're anthropic, that's kind of up to you, right? And after that, I have decided to define my voice IDs from 11 labs. So here you can kind of see I have a voice ID 1 for one of our agents and voice ID 2 for the other one. And these IDs you will find on 11 Labs or whatever kind of text to speech provider you use. Here are kind of my standard colors I like to use in the terminal. If you want to copy that, this is kind of optional, right? And next is just going to be to create this function here that we can open these uh, 
text files we want to use as our system message or some other context we want to add to our system, right? So here's just a straightforward open file that's gonna read a file we have in our working directory, right? Next, I just want to set our text to speech function. So I'm not gonna go through like every single step of this function, but basically this is the function we use to convert text to speech using the 11 labs API. So what you want to do is uh, you want to set a path here for your voices and your output mp3s. Uh, what I might do is I might put this into my uh, .env file here so you can adjust your path from here. Uh, but if you would, don't want to do that, you can just set your path straight in here and kind of name what kind of output, uh, what you want to call your output file. I just call it output.mp3 just for simple sake. And yeah, uh, I'm not going to go through everything here, but you have some parameters here you can adjust if you decide to use 11 labs. And we have some just confirmations here. If the audio was successful, we can kind of return audio generated successful. And if I have some kind of error here, we can see that too. But that is basically the text to speech function. You can just copy this exactly as this. And you can see we pass in our voice IDs here right in this f string and to play the audio we have a very simple function uh, that i just call play audio that just needs our file path so remember our file path was it's gonna be the same as where the text to speech function created our mp3 file right and then we're just gonna move on to create our two agent uh, so we have uh, something called mic chat and this is going to be the function for Mike's chat using the Anthropic API. So we have three arguments here. We want to pass in like the user input. We want to pass in our system message. That we're going to take a look at soon. That is kind of where we set how we want the agent to behave. And we want to do some memory passing here because we want the agents to remember the previous uh, yeah, conversation they had. So they have some context. I'm going to show you how that works. Here you can see we have set our model to Opus, but of course this is optional. You can pick whatever model you want. And I'm using the neon green text here for uh, Mike. So we can kind of separate the two agents by color, right? Same for the AnyChat function. We pass the same arguments and we have selected GPT-4 in my case. I set the max tokens here to 300. That is output tokens because I don't want it to be too long, right? And yeah, this is not streaming, so this is just returning the response. Here I kind of just set up streaming, so that is also kind of up to you. But you can just copy these two functions here, they should work uh, in all cases as long as you have the API key right. And now we kind of come to our main function, so we're gonna spend a bit more time here just going through everything so you understand it. Uh, okay, so if you look at the main function here, the first thing we want to do is I set this up so we can kind of do a user input uh, where we kind of decide what kind of topic we want the agents to talk about and kind of set the maximum number of messages. But this is, uh, you can customize this to whatever you want. So I've set this up to enter the topic Mike wants to talk about and enter the topic Annie wants to talk about. And I just want to enter how many messages they should go back and forward because we don't have a true loop here, we just have a for loop that we kind of set a range. So this input is going to decide the range. And you can see we have some a variable called Mike system message and any system message. This is going to use our open file function to open a file named mike.txt. If we take a look at mike.txt, here is kind of where I set the, yeah, what do you call it, personality of our agent. So I said, you are Mike, a 33 year old man, you just met Annie. And I'm going to show you something important here steer the conversation to talk about and then I have this uh, TPC1 part here so if you remember that and if we go back here now you can see I have used uh, dot replace here so we're gonna replace this string with topic one and remember topic one is what we want Mike to talk about right so if we want him to talk about yeah I don't know AI then the uh, system message is going to be steer the conversation to talk about AI because uh, the string TPC1 is going to be replaced by 
the string AI, right? And that is kind of how we set this up. If we go back here now, we do the same with Annie and her system message. We replace TPC2 with what she wants to talk about from topic2 variable. And then we have the memory system. I just wanted to, I put down some notes here. So the memory system is kind of this that Mike and Annie each have a memory list to store their conversation history. The memory lists are updated with each new message in the conversation and the chat function used the memory list to provide context. So we can kind of get some, yeah, coherent chat between the two agents, right? Yeah, and the memory persists through the conversation, allowing for contextually relevant responses. So that makes the conversation much more easy, right? Uh, but there's one thing we have to do here. We have to set the first user input to kind of kick things off. So I just set this to, hello, Annie. Uh, I'm Mike and that is what's gonna kick off the for loop, right? And then we kind of have Annie is gonna respond to that and she's gonna use the Annie chat function take the user input and her system message and Annie's memory This is this list, right? And we're just gonna print the response and then we're gonna use the text-to-speech function and we're gonna pass in Annie's response here, right from the previous sequence and we pass in all the voice IDs that belongs to Annie. That is kind of the female voice, of course. And at the end here, we're just gonna play the audio that was generated from 11 Labs that is saved to Annie response. And we have this zero here that is gonna be updated for each conversation. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And then we kind of go into our conversation loop. So the next. Uh, here you can kind of see we have the max range, so if we set the max range from up here to let's say 10 messages, uh, the conversation is going to be 10 messages, right? So of course after Annie has said something here, the next response is going to be Mike, he's going to do the same. Uh, I'm not going to print this because I'm using streaming, so I don't have to do that. And then we just go into this loop, right? We use text-to-speech to... Create the voice response, we play it, and then Annie's gonna respond right again. And we're gonna create a new uh, voice from Annie's response, and we're gonna play that. So that is just gonna go through this loop here until we, we reach the max range, and then it's just gonna stop right. So that is kind of the logic behind this. Uh, what I wanted to show you here is that we have 4i in range, so for each loop here the mp3 file is gonna be changed and it's gonna add like a let's say zero one so each mp3 uh, message here uh, is gonna be different uh, there are other ways to do this you can kind of delete the previous one and stuff but for this now we're just gonna use the system so you can always go in and uh, delete this if you don't want them right they're gonna stack up depending on how long your range is and then we're just going to run this main function here, and yeah. I think that's pretty much it. I hope uh, this was quite easy to understand. Basically, it's just two different APIs with a for loop. And we have to kick it off with uh, a user input. And after that, it's, they're just going to keep talking to each other. Uh, so one is going to use the Cloud Opus, and the other is going to use GPT-4. And yeah, there's some cool interactions you can do with this. So now let's take a quick look at kind of how we optimize these prompts before we go and test it some more. Okay, so let's start with Mike here. So it's basically each prompt is kind of similar. So you're Mike, 33 year old man from London. You just met Annie in a cafe in New York. Here you can kind of do whatever you want, right? So this is just the way I set it up. Uh, but try to remember to have this uh, placeholder here. Uh, you will always respond with your thoughts about how you're feeling and what you're thinking about Annie, right? And keep your response natural, very short and conversational because I want this to feel like a conversation. You will always respond in the following format. So you have a response and I just give an example. And you have kind of your inner monologue or thoughts that I kind of want to... So Annie looks great today, should I say something? So. This is kind of reflecting how the agent is thinking about having the conversation. So that is the idea behind this. We basically just mirror this for Annie now, just for Is. And I think we're just gonna do a few examples. And 
let's try a couple of different examples. So let's start with this easy meetup and this cafe here and just set some kind of topic and see what happens. Okay, so let's try to set them up against each other. So Mike is gonna want to talk about how big fan you are that AI is replacing humans. And Annie is gonna be angry about AI taking her job. <laughs> so let's see what happens. So let's just start by copying this. And let's run this script now. And we get the prompt, enter the topic Mike wants to talk about. Right, okay. Let's grab what Annie wants to talk about. And set the number of messages. So let's just set it to 10. That is gonna be 20 interactions. We can just do eight, it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna look at a few here now. So yeah, let's just run it. Response. Hi, Mike. Nice to meet you. How's your day going? My thoughts. He seems nice. Hopefully, he's not one of those tech-obsessed guys. I need a break from all that AI talk. Ouch. So you can see it's streaming now, but the sound takes a bit of a while. So there's some kind of lag here, right? Response. It's going great. I'm really excited about all the advancements in AI lately. Don't you think it's amazing how it could potentially replace so many jobs? My thoughts. Annie seems a bit hesitant about the AI topic. I wonder if she's not as enthusiastic about it as I am. Maybe I should tone it down a bit. Don't want to come on too strong. Ooh, this could hurt, right? Response. Honestly, Mike, the whole AI thing has me worried. It actually replaced my job recently. It's a bit scary, you know? My thoughts. I hope I didn't come off too strong. But seriously, AI is taking over everything. I wonder what Mike thinks about that. Response. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Annie. I can understand your concerns, but I believe AI will ultimately create more opportunities for people in the long run. My thoughts. Shoot, I didn't mean to upset her. I should be more sensitive to her situation. Maybe I can steer the conversation to a more positive note and show some empathy. Response. I hope you're right, Mike. It's just hard to see those opportunities right now, you know? Losing your job to a machine isn't easy to swallow. Ouch. My thoughts. He seems to be trying to be positive. That's nice, I guess. But it's hard to be optimistic when you're in my shoes. Okay, yeah, that was a bit boring. But uh, you can kind of see the idea here. Everything comes down to how you set this up. If you want it to be fun, helpful, or yeah. You can just try to simulate whatever agentic behavior you want here, right? And that is kind of the fun of it. Uh, but let's try one more, just some strange example. Okay, so now I kind of set up your Mike 33 Roman for London. You just met Annie to discuss how to improve the following Python code. And the Python code I pasted in is the code that is running this script, right? So we kind of just pasted in the code we are running. And yeah, uh, you'll always respond with your thoughts, how you're feeling about Annie and her ideas, right? So we just mirror that for both Mike and Annie. And let's see what happens. I haven't tried this before. Response. Hey, Mike, great to see you. I'm ready when you are. My thoughts. Mike's enthusiasm is infectious. I'm really looking forward to diving into this code with him. Wonder if he spotted the same issues I have. Okay. Response. Awesome. Let's dive right in. I've been looking over the code and I think there are some great opportunities for improvement. What stood out to you on your first pass? My thoughts. I'm curious to hear Annie's initial thoughts. It's always helpful to compare notes and see if we're aligned on the main areas for optimization. I should make sure to actively listen and build on her insights. Response? Yeah, absolutely. First thing I noticed is the repetition in handling API clients and keys. We could streamline that by using a loop or a more dynamic approach. How about you? My thoughts. Okay, he's on the same page about optimization. This is good. I wonder if he's also caught the part about error handling. Should I bring that up next? Okay, so yeah, I think that's enough. <laughs> it kind of did work, but it didn't kind of put out any useful stuff. But they at least did understand the code and they did talk about it. So that was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I think that's enough examples. So yeah, that is basically what I wanted to share today. Hope you learned something. Uh, I will, of course, put this uh, code just straight up on the community GitHub. So if you want to become a member, you can just... Uh, sign up in the link below and you can get access to this and the community discord also don't forget to check out the link in the description to brilliant.org thank you for tuning in and i'll see you on wednesday